Welcome to Option Trades today. I'm Tony the Bat Batiste, and I've got a trade idea for you today. June 29th, 2023. Let's first take a look at the market. E mini SPs are up $12.50, a relatively small move. Uh, you'll notice here when I look at the high and low, we've had about a $26 range on the e mini SPs. If you go to the e mini SPs on the trade page, you can see on the right hand side here what the one day expected move here is and it's around $26 so we're right at or around the expected move uh, as by implied volatility now implied volatility forward slash VX that's what I like to look at it doesn't have any options but you can look at the chart um, and you can see volatility is going much lower has been going lower for days and days and days today is the first day we have volatility upticking ever so slightly by 16 cents with three of the indices the Dow the Russell and the E-mini S&P is all higher, only the NASDAQ down small. Typically, volatility will go lower as the market goes higher and higher as the market goes lower. Um, this is the first time we've seen volatility kind of catch a little bit of a bid. Now at 15.16, relatively low, is a small move of 1% higher, even though the market is also higher. Significant, I don't think so but it is something to look at. All right, what are we going to look at to trade today? Well, I always go to my watch list. I've kind of, um, since there are a lot of earnings coming out, I've gone away from the high option volume list and kind of concentrate on the S&P 100 list. This is a pre uh, list that we have already in um, our market indices. You can just go right down here and click on uh, S&P 100 and this will bring up this uh, these stocks for you. The S&P 100, the 100 most capitalized stocks. Why am I doing that? Well, twofold. Volatility is low, so I'm looking for stocks that are more uh, widely traded. I don't want to get in too many uh, in a stock that's not liquid, although I am going to trade something that's a little bit funky for you today, so I'm going to eat my words here in a quick second. But anyway, I went to the S&P 100 list. I also, since earnings are looming everywhere, and you can see here on the left hand, on the right hand side, how all these stocks basically have earnings coming uh, in July and August. So instead of clicking on the IVX five day change, which I like to look at, I like to have that from high to low. I want to put on a trade um, that has volatility expanding over the over the last five days. And you can see there are many stocks that are expanding over the last five days. Plus, I like to see some some IV ranks expanding too, which you do have in some of these. But the big caveat is earnings looming uh, in any trade that I would do in August. So I'm going to this time, uh, search by stocks that don't have earnings, and you'll only have uh, a few here. Now, the one that I end up picking on, I did look at Costco uh, to place a trade in there, but I ended up going in AVGO. Now, I'll tell you why. When I placed the trade about a half an hour ago, um, volatility was up small over the last five days, but it hadn't gone down. You can see it's unchanged over the last five days. It has an IV rank of 14, which isn't uh, that good, but it is one of the higher, unless you throw it out, unless you put an oracle there, uh, it is one of the higher ones that does not have earnings. Also, I like to look at what um, volatility has been doing as opposed to just on the IVX five day change. I have it down here on my chart. You can get this, this IVRTW, which is Implied Volatility Rank, Tasty Works, high and low, the, the red and uh, I have mine red and green. You can change your, yours to what you want by just clicking on these indicators and then adding this IVRTW, uh, click save and it will be on the bottom of your charts too if you would like to see that IVR in a graph form on the bottom. All right, AVGO, a stock that I do not trade that much. Um, you can see here that it was going pretty much sideways for quite some time, made a nice high run here. AVGO on the strategy that I'm gonna use, which is a broken wing butterfly, um, you typically like to have skew on the side that you're doing the butterfly. Why? Because, well, I'll show you right now. Um, um, let's go, let's just take a look. The stock is 860. Let's go down by $60 to the 800s. Those 800 uh, puts are trading for, uh, let's just call it $12.20. Let's go up $60 to 920. 
Those calls equal distance away, $60 away from the, the stock price is right now, are trading $15 and let's call it 50 cents, 40 cents. Markets are a little bit wide in here. You can see there's almost $3 worth of call skew in AVGO and AVGO does not have earnings until August 31st, which is after the August 18th expiration. So no uh, earnings and call skew. Now you can certainly put on uh, an undefined risk trade, but in an $860 stock, that's going to use a lot of buying power. So you're limiting everything that you're doing. You're trying to limit risk and also put yourself in an advantageous uh, case for the strategy that you're using. So I don't have a directional opinion in AVGO. I, I guess if a, if you had to put uh, if you had to make me come up with a with a with a direction on it, I would go you know sideways to slightly lower would be my call. And with call skew in here, it really sets up nicely for a broken wing butterfly. We like call skew, or at least I do, on a broken wing butterfly because the options that I'm selling are a little bit fatter. Uh, and that, make, that makes the, the broken wing butterfly trade a little bit richer um, than we would because I'm buying one call spread and selling another. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm buying the 920 calls one time and I'm selling the 940 calls two times. Now you can see that spread is trading for $6.80, but it's going to use almost $26,000 in buying power. And with the average size account somewhere between forty and eighty thousand dollars, that's way too much buying power to use. So a define an undefined risk trade is nothing that we can look at um, in this podcast, at least. So I like to buy one spread. It's twenty dollars wide, and I'd like to sell one spread that's forty dollars wide, two times the size. So instead of going to the nine. 60s, which would be a regular butterfly, pay a dollar ten. You can see my probably profit is ten percent. I'm going to widen it out and go to the 980s. Now I'm only using nineteen hundred dollars in buying power. I have an 85 percent pop, a small delta negative position, 278. I was able to get filled at, um, I believe, a dollar with the stock up twelve dollars in change. Uh, twelve dollars and eighty cents, and I was able to get filled at eighty-seven cents, I believe. Let's take a quick look because uh, I forget. Let's go right here to our um, follow page. Pardon me. Go down to our follow page. Click on uh, Bob the Trader. You'll notice I have these in here. I got filled at eighty-nine cents. I'm sorry, eighty-nine cents with the stock at eight fifty-seven and a half. Just about where it is now, and when it was at 860, I was able to get filled at a dollar. Just showing you that the spread moves about 10 cents on every two or three dollar move today um, that you get on the stock. Now the stock's already up uh, 10 dollars and change today. All right, so why do I go uh, twice as wide? Well, I'm risking two to make one. What's the little kicker in here? Well, the little kicker in here is. If the stock closes at 940, you actually make $2,000 because you're long the 920, 940 call spread one time. I know it says one by two, but you're long that one time at 940. That would be worth $20. So you make $2,000. The, the call spread that you're short, the 940, 980, would be worth nothing. You short that one time. So it'd be a full profit at $2,000. What am I really looking to make here? I don't know, 50 cents to to a to to 80 cents uh, would be about as a uh, home run on this type of trade. What kind of defense would I have on this trade? Well, you could sell any kind of put spread that's $20 wide and you wouldn't be using any more buying power. So if this this spread which basically has um, three short deltas to it ever gets to about 10 or 15 deltas, then I'll look to sell a $20 wide put spread. And I'll look to pick up another five or seven long deltas by doing that and not using any buying power. Um, let's go to the put spread just so I could show you um, that, that how the call skew affects that trade. Um, so we were doing the 920, which was around $60 away at the time. Let's just go to the 800. And let's go to the 780s. That's one by two. 
You can already see that it's collecting $5 and change where we were collecting over $6 before. And then let's go um, $40 uh, wider than this. Let's go down to the 740s. Uh, you're using the same just under $2,000. Hey, you know what? Make a little bit of a liar out of me. The credit here is 75 cents. Now, remember, it's basically zero bid at a dollar fifty. So markets are a little bit wide. So the call skew, the call broke a wing butterfly with the call skew is probably trading about 30 cents higher, maybe 25 cents higher than the put spread. Equal probability of success, equal deltas obviously on the opposite side, but at least that's a good way for you to look at um, the difference between call skew and put skew. I think in a, in a product that has better markets, tighter markets, um, that you'll be able to see that uh, skew in the trades a little bit easier. I did the call spread because I'm slightly neutral to bearish. If you're slightly neutral to bullish, then maybe you'll be looking at the put spread that I have up on the screen. But everything that you should be looking at, you can find the Tasty Trade, the number one brokerage firm in the universe. Help us keep the lights on here. Open up an account at Tasty Trade today. Or listen, just move an account from an existing brokerage firm. We love that too.